Our first information item this evening um, is our Ann Arbor Public Schools High School African American Humanities course. Um, we have, as an information um, item, this, this is a little less formal, and we have many of our um, teachers here up with us on stage. So we're testing this a little bit to see if this works for you all and works for us too. We'd also love people to see you and hear you. So hopefully that will work. <laughs> but you'll let us know if not, and we'll adjust um, later on. Oh, and we need a microphone up there. Yeah, we have, okay. we have it. So we're getting that. Yeah, we're doing that. And um, Dr. Swift will introduce this item, but we are very much looking forward to hearing how this is going and your advice. And trustees will, of course, have, um, they'll participate in the thinking along with everyone else. So um, Dr. Swift, let's begin. Very good. So uh, trustees and members of the community, we've been looking forward for some time to hearing directly from our teachers who facilitate and teach our African American humanities course in the district. We are so very proud of this work in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. I don't believe there are few, if any, other districts in Michigan that that do this kind of work, and I know that they don't do this quality of work. I'm very proud of this team, and you will meet them all. We'll also give a shout out to Sarah Andrew Vaughn, who's joined us from the back, who also serves on this to support this great teaching team. Um, there are common themes of study in the African American Humanities course that you will hear about as you hear our teacher leaders and teacher speakers this evening. This staff, this team works together and they share ideas. And just like every course in the district, there are specific um, uniquenesses about each program. They'll share a little bit of that with you. But we are confident that all of our students are receiving just an incredible learning opportunity. We're very excited that the course continues to evolve uh, so they are sharing ideas and we um, are getting more resources and making sure uh, that the course is continuing to evolve in a quality way. The thing that I'm so excited about this evening, trustees, is this idea of celebrating our teachers. It's one thing when you all come to the table and we talk about curricula and you're faced with decisions of purchases and all of the things that you face every week, but it is a special evening in the Ann Arbor Public Schools when we get to hear directly from our teachers who are in the classroom doing the work. I'm so excited for the reports that I hear from our students. And trustees, I would love at some point and in some way, I'm looking over my shoulder to Mr. Cluley, uh, to get some first person reports. And I know that I've heard them myself and you all hear them every day, but I'd love to document some of those first person reports from our students in, in the African American Humanities course. So we will continue to develop and implement and enrich and enhance as we go. But what you're hearing tonight is really what our teachers are doing every day as we focus on teaching and learning in these tremendous classrooms. Um, it is also a class that is offered for advanced AC credit. So I do want to point out that this is a real pride point for the district as well. So I'm so honored to present Ms. Kay Wade, and she is going to introduce her team as they go along naturally. Um, and you'll hear from them as we share more about this great class. Uh, Ms. Wade. Thank you, Dr. Swift. Good evening, trustees and community. I'd like to start off by introducing you to our staff. From here on, we have Anthony Stewart, who has 17 years of teaching. I guess I should switch here. Okay. 17 years of teaching, 10 years of experience in African American humanities. He also teaches government and economics. Kimberly Wright, who has 24 years of teaching experience, 10 years teaching African American humanities. Um, and she also teaches African-American literature, English 10, and she's the extended essay coordinator for the diploma program. Mm -hmm. At Pathways, we have Musetta Deneen. 
She has five years of teaching, and she teaches African American literature, Spanish one and two. At Pioneer, we have Amir Daniel, who has 19 years of teaching. He is teaching African American humanities, English 10, and, Af and American literature for 11th grade this year. Sophie Hart, who's new to Ann Arbor schools, but has had three years of teaching, two years teaching English in Rwanda, and she's teaching African American humanities, world history, and geography, and then she travels to Tappan to teach her U.S. history course there. At Skyline, we have Kathy McCurcher, 22 years a teacher, seven years teaching African American humanities, Tanya Whitehorn, 18 years of teaching, seven years of teaching African American humanities, and she's our Rising Scholars Coordinator. I'm Kay Wade. I've had 47 years of teaching. <laughs> I didn't want them to put that there. <laughs> and <laughs> I was just out of kindergarten. It, it doesn't look possible. <laughs> and 20 years of teaching African American wow. humanities. And the reason I've had 20 years is because African American humanities was started at Huron High School. Crystal Hall Abney and myself were teaching. I taught history and she taught American Lit and I was teaching American history. And we kept having students that we had in common um, and we found out we were often teaching in the same topics at the same time. But the other thing that concerned us were that we had a lot of students who were C plus or better students who were not enrolled in AC or AP courses. And we talked about how do we go about encouraging, promoting, pushing these young people to do that. So we've created African American Humanities, designed to be rigorous, designed to have them do things that they thought they could not do. And as a result, we had students, once they left our course, say, oh, I think I'll try that AC course, or I think I'll try that AP course. So that's really how the course got started, and we, as Dr. Swift said, I think we're one of the few courses in the country that has African American humanities. Um, there are three programs at Huron, Pioneer, and Skyline, and currently we have about 91 students enrolled in all three programs. Our numbers, Skyline, when we say seven years, Skyline, when we at the 12th grade, we started African American Humanities. So seventh year, Skyline has had 12th graders. Huron had to take a year off because of developing the IB program. So I look, and we are seeing our numbers jump for next year. And Huron this year has brought uh, African American Humanities back online. Um, there are three literature courses. And for the first time this summer, we are going to offer an African American Humanities course. And Anthony Stewart and Kim Wright will be teaching the course. Course objectives uh, for African American Humanities consist of African American uh, history and literature. And we use these to uh, understand the African American experience always from the early 1600s until uh, present day history. Um, one of the things we try to emphasize in our course is that um, African American history does not start with uh, slavery and that uh, we go back and we look at some of the earlier uh, African uh, culture and uh, history to make a connection to the African Americans. So as Kay shared, we have the program at Skyline, Huron, Pioneer, and Pathways. Skyline, it is a senior class and it is over two trimester courses. Um, Huron has an English 10 AC, and so that is a year-long course of English credit and a year-long uh, course of U.S. history. Both receive AC credit. At Pioneer, it is a junior-senior class, year-long, where they have a year of English and their social studies is an elective. Um, at Pathways, currently there's a semester-long English course uh, with talks of next year adding uh, the social studies with the English. 
Our common teaching themes are power and ideology, identity as it pertains to inclusion, distinction, and victimization, oral history and griots and written histories, freedom and liberation and social justice, the African diaspora as it pertains to the movement of individuals of African descent and their impact on the cultures that um, they visit. And lastly, jubilation and empowerment. The literature we teach provides a context for which to anchor discussions, projects, and out-of-class experiences. Selected texts offer our students an African-American perspective on the aforementioned teaching themes. Additionally, our curriculum allows the opportunity for all programs to explore individual student interests. To give you guys a specific idea of some of the texts that we teach in our courses, in 11th and 12th grade at Skyline, the texts that are used are Native Sun, The Pact, A Raisin in the Sun, The Color Purple, The Glory Field. At Huron High School, there's a 10th grade course, and the texts used in that course are Color of Water, Kindred, Their Eyes Were Watching God, and The Piano Lesson. Um, additional texts and works are also pulled from the Prentice Hall Anthology of African American Literature. And to echo what my colleague said before, we use supplemental texts as well to meet the needs of our unique populations at our individual buildings. When we started uh, African American Humanities at Skyline, it was important that kids wrap themselves around an idea of studying a people. And we began with history, reminding our students that people were taken from Africa, not slaves. We start there and we move forward. We have the students embracing trials and triumphs over time, um, institutional racism, segregation, hypocrisy in US laws, the African diaspora, enslavement, basically the entire experience of people of African des descent as long as we have been in this country. We develop a multitude of skills because we are always pushing the students to write better, to think more, to open up, um, open up their eyes and express their ideas and not be afraid of those ideas. So we cover primary source analysis, analytical writing. We help develop their discussion skills, critical thinking, research. We teach them how to present and um, how to write persuasive arguments. This course also had a psychology component. Dr. Byron Douglas has been a part of African American humanities since we, I started, I was at Huron, so for about 20 years. He comes into at Skyline as well as the Huron where he talks about psychology from an Afrocentric point of view. Students learn about diseases and health and how racism, discrimination, have caused problems for African American people as well as in communities, um, hospitals, and facilities. So we always have that particular component, and as a result, many of our students want to major in psychology when Dr. Douglas finishes lecturing. <laughs> our co-teaching model falls under the category of a teaming model, but we also like to include the term inclusive. The whole goal is to have this fluid, natural exchange of ideas between the staff and the students. The term inclusive specifically applies to the students and how we view that population and trying to engage all students in our program. When we sat down to launch African American Humanities, we asked the question, how do we engage students with special needs who have the potential to take the college course but don't see themselves as having the ability? <coughs> with the right supports, who could be successful in this program? So we sat down, we layered supports throughout the course, and our students excel. All of our students on caseload passed the course. 85%, and that may be a little bit higher, have received A and B marks as their final grade. Our goal is to meet them where they are at and guide them through towards college readiness. We encourage students on our caseload to attend college, and they follow through with effort, many graduating, some still working towards that goal. If you were to walk into our classroom, you cannot distinguish who is a special educator or a general educator, nor can you tell which students are on caseload. 
At Pioneer, we've had the opportunity to engage students in active learning through wor real world experiences. This enhances classroom content for them through visiting exhibits highlighting the African diaspora um, and empowering students to understand the world more deeply. Uh, one experience we had was at the Detroit Institute of Arts to view exhibits of African-American protest art and photography of Detroit musicians. Um, students also experienced a performance by dance company Step Africa that was based on Jacob Lawrence's migration series. Um, this gave students the opportunity to see and feel the topics that we had studied in class. Our experience at the Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati, Ohio, gave students a first-hand look at the atrocities of slavery. In the picture on the left, we see a quilt dedicated to different themes focused on the African-American experience. Uh, this quilt also shows the diversity of African-American culture. One of the other things that we uh, do is we have an art connection in um, African-American humanities. In and, and the Huron program, uh, we use literature and history to create a, uh, uh, to try to understand some of the experiences that um, people have had over time. And so we use a, a, an art connection to do that. So after uh, reading a, a, a couple of particular books, we select themes uh, that fit both the his, history and the literature. And then students have to create a question around that theme and try to express an answer about that theme through their artwork. And so we have them uh, uh, incorporate things like African uh, adinkra symbols as part of the concepts uh, uh, in their expression. So like, for example, in the center one, uh, the uh, symbol which is above, uh, this person is looking at um, the idea of uh, omnipresence and transformation. And that transformation takes place through uh, the great migration of African Americans moving out of the uh, south into the north. Um, Particularly, uh, some of the other things that we have to do in our courses is that, um, let's move to the next slide. This is another example of, this is uh, another idea of transformation in, uh, through music and self-expression that uh, African Americans had to do, or did during the uh, Harlem Renaissance and identifying themselves during the New Negro Movement. Um, particularly, one other thing that uh, we have to do as teachers in our courses is um, we teach the art, we teach the music, we teach the history, and we also teach the literature. Uh, unlike the uh, our other humanities courses in Ann Arbor, where they have uh, a music instructor and also a, a art instructor that, that uh, is part of their component. So continuing with this unit, um, you were able to see some of the samples of the work final drafts that the students went through. Just like writing, they go from a first draft to a second draft to a third draft, and you're able to see those final pieces where they display their understanding of our history and literature unit. To continue making connections in our class, um, one of the things that we do that's special at Huron is we put on a program, a jazzistry program. Vincent York is an individual in our community who has an education program that he's been running for about 20 years. And Mr. York is someone who's a saxophonist, a flutist, and an educator. And jazzistry represents jazz, artistry, and history. And he comes into our classroom and he works with the students over several weeks to give them that education, to make connections to what they've learned in class. And then once that time is done, the students think about all that they've learned throughout the year and they decide how they desire to make connections with what they've learned. So along with Mr. York and Jazzistry, they put to, together a program that incorporates um, poetry, music, different forms of expression that they want to add into the performance, um, going, telling their story uh, through history. So what we have next is just a sample of one of the performances. And what you'll see at the start is something else that's special at Huron, is that we um, incorporate uh, the acapella choir. We also have the jazz band come in. So it's not just the humanities uh, students.
Skyline has also had an opportunity to have um, Vincent York and Jazzistry when their funds available, and we to include the choirs and the orchestra in our building. Uh, when I was at Huron, I had a student in my class, and her mother happened to have been a professor at the <laughs> University of Michigan in dance. She came in, volunteered, and has been with us ever since. She comes and volunteers and teaches an entire dance unit at Skyline, um, where she comes all, and at the end, the kids have to perform a dance to a poem um, based on what they've learned over the entire year. Um, Robin Wilson is best known as a founding member of the Urban Bush Women, who have been in our area many times. So our Black History Month began in 2005 and 2006 at Skyline High School. Its inception came from the idea of merging the MLK Assembly and the Black History Month Assembly, but we also wanted a place for our students to educate the student body through poetry, art, skits, dance. I know some of you have seen our work. We're very proud and we hope that um, you will enjoy a snippet in just a moment. Our themes generally mirror what we see in the community. Either we borrow from U of M or Eastern Michigan University, but we also take a look at the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. We simply provide the theme and the students create one amazing show. Please enjoy the snippet. be all right. What you will see this morning is an interpretation of our theme for the year, Resist, Survive, Thrive. I will look beyond the problems to solutions. I will look beyond the obstacles to opportunities. No, we are not protesting the flag. We are protesting against police brutality and injustice in this country. I will be brave and free regardless if you love or hate. Lift every voice and sing. Hear my anthem. Hear my take. Well, I hope you'll get a chance to view it in its entirety later. Thank you very much. Last but not least, at the end of each trimester or the second trimester for us at Skyline, it's important to us that we receive student feedback about what, we, what we've done well, what we still need some work on, and how the class has uh, impacted the lives of our students. So I'll just read you the four quotes that we have here from our seniors at Skyline High School. I had not known the depths in which racism impacts us. There were psychological impacts on even myself that I was unaware of, to Mia Morton. This class has given me more than any class since elementary. The knowledge given to me about the history of my people is invaluable, Darren Davis. I've broadened my horizons in terms of thinking and I've fully found my voice the sense of pride, intelligence, and family that comes from with this class is one that cannot be exchanged. Princess Ewing. I have wanted to be in this class since freshman year. I enjoy working with everyone and hearing their ideas and perspectives. Medina Muhammad. And so we thank you for allowing us to present our program tonight. And but we do have one other thing. How can you support us? <laughs> Art, music, and dance. We do the best we can, but we can always have support with that. We would love to be, all of us would love to take our students on um, field trips, particularly some joint field trips. Um, we want to expand the program at Pathways. And we're talking in terms of adding a service action component. And that, thank you, concludes our presentation. Very good, thank you. Well, I'd like to, um, say this is, I think, really important to have some emphasis on, especially now, the times that we're in now. So I just appreciate so much that we have this and your commitment and dedication to this. I think the diversity in the classrooms is key to getting to uh, a, a much better place as a society as well. So I'm happy to hear that, but I hope that continues and grows. So thank you all for your hard work and dedication to this really important area on behalf of everyone that lives here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.